I think that the animal use of antibiotics in some ways is mimicking the people use of antibiotics. And I think that we have a, we as a, a population or we as a community have a very different idea on what an antibiotic can be used for, what it's there for, and uh, what you have uh, in, the, in way of designated uh, drugs. I think that the fact that you get some more growth out of an animal and you give an antibiotic and it goes to everyone, I mean, it's creating in its wake resistant bacteria that well, then come back. And in fact, a recent FDA report found, if I've got this right, that 65% of chickens and 44% of ground beef tested uh, carried bacteria resistant to tetras tetracycline. Yeah, they, they, the organisms being found, sometimes the drug itself has not been found, but the organisms are the ones that aren't followed. They test for the drug. So we have to really sort of open up the vision here to see that it's the drug that may be in small amounts that you can't detect, but it's creating a lot of resistant bacteria. I call, getting back to some of the earlier, I call antibiotics societal drugs, if you think about it. They're the only drug in a category that individual use affects the rest of the community. Should we not tax people for that? What should we do to stop this profligate use of antibiotics when we're affecting all of society? We're affecting communities. And, and so this way, I think you change the focus to realize that the animals and people interact together. And we have a drug which will affect other people and will affect animals and pet animals and so forth. It's not like any other drug out there that is individualized.